Sorry guys, I said we got the phone there. Um, I was supposed to make this video twice, but then we were having some issues at home with the phone line, so I had to talk to the get technician. But I'm not here to talk about phone home phones, I'm not here to talk about internet, I'm not here to talk about Bell, Rogers, Telus, whatever you want to call it. I'm here to talk about last night's Monday Night Raw that took place at the Key Arena in Seattle, Washington. This was like, there's also the Slammy Awards. I don't want to talk about the Slammy Awards, like the Slammy Awards were the Slammy Awards. Like, I was happy with most of the outcomes, except for Diva of the Year and the nominees for Match of the Year. I never even gave two craps about when it got announced. I'm here to talk about what happened at the end. That whole championship ascension angle was like, it was, the only thing that killed it was Coles and John Bradshaw Layfield's commentary. Like, if they just stood there, didn't say a word, or had like a few side notes here or there, would have made it. They sold me on this pay-per-view. I'm going to be strictly honest. I'm here to talk more about TLC coming up Sunday than Raw last night. Just a quick video. Uh, like, the way it was booked, everything that happened, how you had uh, Orton come out and basically said ruthless, the ruthless aggression angle. They're bringing back all these great angles, all these great stories. Like, they're making for a solid show. Like, it's one of those things where, what can happen now? It's like, anything can happen. It's WWE, but a lot of people, like, it can go right anyway, like, Orton can win, Cena can win, one champion can grab one championship belt, one can grab the other, it's really just a matter of time, five days, you gotta wait till Sunday, I would've made this video last night when I got home, or like after the show was done, but I was dead tired, I had a long day, I, w I went to bed last night at like 12, I woke up like 10, 4, I woke up like two and a half hours ago. I was in heaven. Yeah. Uh, but no, like last night everything, the crowd, the show, how hot that crowd was over Daniel Bryan was like, it was more about him than Cena Orton. Even though it was like that, like, or, like the ruthless aggression angle, Orton coming and everything, basically talking about that, sure, this is the third go-around for those guys with championship matches, but 2007, 2009 was their best by far with the I Quit, the Hell in a Cell, and the Iron Man match. This one, a TLC match. Orton doesn't have that much history in TLC. Cena, when you think of TLC, you think of Unforgiven, which happened down the road at the Air Canada Center. That's all I think of when I think of Cena in the TLC match was Unforgiven 06. I wasn't at that pay-per-view, but wish I was. Um, on another note, uh, like with last night, everything that happened, how, and then Cena basically came out, called out, they like say, I'm giving you the next match, Brian, like, perfect, crowd was so behind Brian, like, but like, having all those guys standing there, like, kind of felt uncomfortable, felt kind of awkward, all in one at the same time. Uh, apart from that, like, the end of everything, when, uh, they were holding everyone back, and then S S Punk was holding Orton back. Punk got a, Orton got a cheap shot on Punk. Punk got a cheap shot on Orton. And Triple H threw him away. That's warning signs to what's going to happen at Mania. I like it how now you have the little things that are building up towards down the road. Like, they're already getting ready for it. Like, apparently there were some Hulk, Hulk Hogan videos last night during the commercial break. Thanks to no DQ for that tip. Uh, other news and notes, like, last night how everyone hit their finishers on everyone. You had... Uh, Cena didn't hit on anyone with anything, neither did Orton. Orton did get hit with the finisher, though. Like, how everything happened, where you had uh, Punk get sweet chin music. Uh, Michaels got hit with a running knee. Hunter didn't get hit with anything, but Hunter did hit pedigree on Orton, which kind of, like, kind of shows where everything's going. Kind of shows that there's going to be some turmoil. But I can't, like, everyone's like, oh, Cena healed and Cena healed and I'm like, no. Cena heel turn happening is like how everyone says this is their year to win the Stanley Cup. It's it's it, it can happen. Who knows if it ever will happen? We just have to wait and see. But I don't think it should happen. Unlike, but I do think the Leafs should win the cup. Other news and notes from last night's show. Uh, I liked with the Daniel Bryan. I'm really excited for that Bray Wyatt matchup. I do see Daniel Bryan winning that, but I do see the Shield beating Punk. But I do see them starting to break up the Shield. Like you can see the tendencies, Roman Reigns and like keep Ambrose and Rollins together, but then Reigns somehow or do it how Reigns costs them the match for Sunday. Even that could happen just to get Reigns like away from everything because. He's going to get pushed next year. We all know it. Like, they're high on Reigns. They're high on Langston. They're high on Summer Rae. There's the three people that are looking to go big in the company this coming year. 
Uh, apart from that, you also had uh, all the other good match that we had. There was good. Uh, Brodus Clay heel turn. I've been waiting for this since his debut two years ago as the Funkasaurus. Since yeah, I've been waiting for that. Like it's good for his character. It's just like there are certain guys who should be faces and certain guys who should be heels. It's like Cena should be face. Uh, there's a few other guys. Dane, I think O'Brien can go either way. Henry can go either way. Christian can go either way. But there's certain guys who are just better as heels, like Orton, Edge, Sean, not not Sean, um, Orton thing, Kane, Damian Sandow. Um, yeah, it's like certain guys should be certain characters, and I think Bros Clay should just be a heel. Uh, yeah, but for the most part, they sold me on Sunday. Uh, I would, I'm thinking of doing a prediction video, but none of you smarks watch it. Uh, look forward to one maybe tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday. No, or Thursday. Someday, this, sometime this week. Uh, I'll see how I'm feeling if I want to make one or not. There will, will be a review video Sunday night after the pay-per-view mixed in with, so there's going to be like, or what I'm going to do is, I was supposed to do this last night, I might do like a, like a, like, do a review after each match, and then at 11 o'clock, do the full Total Divas review, so I'll be, like, or, like, split-screen both, or do a Total Divas review at, like, midnight. But, yeah, for the most part, keep the short and sweet. Raw? It was probably the most complete Raw since September 9th, 2013, which I was attending. Next week's Raw, let's, like, the next, I'm not expecting much from the next three Raws coming up, honestly. I'm not expecting anything from the, the show in Dallas, the show in Austin, or the show in Richmond. Richmond, I won't be watching, do the holiday tour in Toronto, which I will be at. And then January 6th, that's when they got to start impressing me. So, like, now they can be quiet about everything, like, have just a normal Raw, where it's like, no, no you're not expecting anything out of it for the next three weeks, which I'm not, I'm not opposed to at all. Uh, apart from that, uh, I'm happy with this. I'm really looking forward to Sunday now. I'll catch you guys later.